there is, as all of you know, a great deal of confusion, bad information that you're hearing in the press. And we are at a time when we need to pause and to decide what we do know, what we do not know, and have the patience to wait for good information before we speculate on what will be done. So what I'd like to do is to take but a few minutes of your time and go over some of the things that we do know and offer some of my conclusions. And I then turned over to Professor Schrader and asked him to do the same thing. And then uh, with Mark as the moderator, then open it up to any of your questions or comments or concerns. Uh, that's the whole purpose of this time. We do know, all of you know, that yesterday, terrorists of an unknown ethnicity did strike the symbols of power in this country. The World Trade Center in New York, which represents the heart of our financial district, and the Pentagon in Washington, which is the symbol of our military might, our armed forces. As you know, there were four airplanes that were hijacked two American Airlines flights and two United flights, and those civilian airliners were used as instruments by the terrorists to wreak havoc and to destroy up to thousands of innocent lives, innocent people all. In my judgment, we've been robbed of any sense of security that we are free from this type of attack within our borders. What is striking to me is the precision and planning that must have gone into this attack. When you consider that the first airplane that was slammed into the World Trade Center hit it, I think it was around quarter of nine yesterday morning, and then it was about 18 minutes later that the second airplane came into the second tower. And then less than an hour, from that time, the American Airlines flight coming out of Dulles went into the Pentagon. I was just checking with CNN and the news media, and although there are some investigative leads indicating possible ties, possible ties, to a terrorist group sponsored by Osama bin Laden, there is no credible evidence yet. And all of you should remember that in 1995, after the Oklahoma City bombing of the Murrah Federal Building, that there was a John Doe III who was arrested when he got off an airplane in the Middle East. And that turned out to be false. So uh, we need to be patient and to wait for all the evidence to come in. But the attack does confirm something that all of us have known for some time, that this country is tremendously vulnerable to a terrorist attack of some manner. Most of the efforts on the part of our government have recently been channeled more towards a chem-bio attack. What we've all known is that anyone can bring into this country in a briefcase, in a bag, biological spores that can cause the deaths of thousands of people. And if you've been reading in the papers, you'll know that the exercises by the government of our federal, state, and local officials have shown that we are just not prepared for such an attack. I believe, I truly believe that the attack of yesterday could not, I repeat, could not have been prevented. The way it was orchestrated, using civilian airliners that normally would be expected to be in the airspace between the cities, and the timing of such, that there's nothing that the administration or the armed forces could have done, given the circumstances, to have avoided that disaster. When we look to the future, though, and we look for the tools on how we can deal with terrorism in this country after this tragic event of yesterday, we recognize that there, there are a few things we can do. One, I think many of us believe that if there is a failure anywhere, it is a failure of intelligence. This country has become extremely sophisticated in what we call SIGINT, signals intelligence. The acquisition of those signals and the analysis of those signals 
by the NSA and the other government agencies. Where we have failed, and we have failed for at least 10 years, is in the development and sustainment of human intelligence. Dealing with folks inside an organization who will give us the information we need. That is not something that this country can do alone. We will have to rely on our allies, and beyond our allies, those countries that we have traditionally not dealt with before. And if there is credible information out there, if there is evidence as far as who the responsible party is, <coughs> or a sponsoring state in yesterday's attack, it's in somebody's intelligence community, and that's where we need to find it. There's been a lot of emotion and a lot of talk in the media and elsewhere about the response. The response. What will this country do and when will we do it? There is a rage within me and I suspect in you that needs to be vented. We want to do something. I would caution us that until we know exactly who we are dealing with, then any kind of response, whether it be armed forces or less government action is inappropriate. We did air, as many of you know, in Sudan when we sent cruise missiles into a pharmaceutical plant that we then believed to be making the precursor of VX. Our intelligence was wrong, and the United States has acknowledged that. So we must be precise as far as who we are targeting. I personally believe that if we are to make a statement against terrorism, that we should not do it, or attempt to do it, unilaterally. That when we respond, as surely we will, we need to have our allies and as many members of the international community with us. Either an active participation in a military strike, or at least with their consent. And I have been hearing in the news reports that the European Union, NATO, and even Putin in Russia have indicated that they would be willing to support some type of retaliatory action. Now, let me say something about the response. Notwithstanding the fact that the terrorists killed thousands of innocent civilians and targeted those civilians, the United States and the Allies will not. We are a nation under the rule of law. We agree that much of Additional Protocol 1, 1977 Additional Protocol 1 to the Geneva Conventions has become customary international law. We do not target innocent civilians, nor will we. And that needs to be made clear. In an asymmetric attack such as was made against this country yesterday does not mean that we respond in kind. And we will not. But surely there will be a response and hopefully that response will be an international response to make the most credible statement possible that terrorism will not be supported anywhere in the world. The legal predicate for that response will be self-defense. It's the same predicate we used when we sent cruise missiles into Afghanistan in the training centers where we then had credible evidence that Osama bin Laden was responsible for the bombings of our U.S. embassies in Kenya and Tanzania. That evidence was solid. If, again, we have that evidence, then our response and hopefully those of our allies that join us will be in accordance with the rule of law, dealing in self-defense in a proportionate response. As far as long-term effects of what we've gone through, I, I think all of us agree that uh, there has been a certain loss of innocence in our security in this country. You and I will never feel quite as secure again when we board an airplane or go in a building. But just as happened after the Oklahoma City bombing in 1995, Congress went to the floor to debate what measures could be taken to change the laws, to change the legislation, to give our law enforcement agencies better tools for infiltrating terrorist organizations, roving wiretaps, and the like. And there were some overtures made that would have pushed our civil liberties far too far. Wise minds prevailed. I would expect to see the same thing happen in the next several months on Capitol Hill, and hopefully the same thing will happen. Although you and I will go through more security devices when we board airplanes, we cannot afford, we cannot afford to put in jeopardy our fundamental constitutional rights. And I believe we will see that result.